Hello and welcome to Arirang's special coverage of South Korea's official ceremony commemorating 70th anniversary of the outbreak of the Korean War. I'm Moon Gun Young. Seventy years ago, on this June 25th, the Korean War broke out, leading to a military conflict that lasted over three years. Nearly two million soldiers and medical officers from 22 U.N. member states, including the U.S., U.K., Canada and Turkey, took part with more than 37,900 killed and 103,000 wounded. The 1952-53 Korean War ended in armistice rather than a peace treaty, leaving U.S.-led U.N. forces technically still at war with North Korea. This year's ceremony marking the outbreak of the Korean War is extra special in that it will be held together with a repatriation ceremony of the 147 remains of South Korean soldiers from the Korean War, the largest repatriation of its kind from Joint Pace Pearl Harbor in Hickam in Hawaii. We'll bring you live coverage of the event dubbed Salute to the Heroes, hosted by President Moon Jae-in. It's currently underway at Seoul Air Base. And to help us through the live coverage, I have in the studio with me Dr. Ko Myung-hyun, Research Fellow at the Asan Institute for Policy Studies. Dr. Ko, it's wonderful to have you in the studio for this very meaningful mm -hmm. ceremony. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Right, so uh, this year's event, mm. under the uh, slogan of Remembrance, Solidarity and Peace, it's being held at Seoul Air Base mm. in the evening. That's very unique mm. and it's for the first time ever that a welcoming ceremony of these uh, remains of the war heroes are being um, taking place together with this uh, mm. ceremony. What's so special about this? Well, I think it actually reflects the President Moon's uh, philosophy of intercultural relations. Uh, again, the, today, the June 25th marks the, the date when North Korea invaded South Korea, which led to uh, hundreds of thousands of casualties, not just on soldiers, but also on civilians. And it was one of the most traumatic historical experiences that the uh, Korean nation experienced in the recent, uh, I mean, in the, in the modern times. Uh, but I think by emphasizing not so much about the remembrance of the war, but rather the sacrifice made by the ordinary Koreans, I think President Moon is trying to shift the focus of the, this anniversary from one about confrontation, a memory of confrontation between uh, brothers and sisters of the same nation, to something about uh, a refocus on the ordinary, ordinary uh, soldiers and civilians who fought bravely to defend the nation. So I think uh, he's shifting the focus uh, and then revaluing the, one of the, some of the meanings of the war, essentially one from conflict to uh, something about sacrifice. Now, um, we had in the last couple mm. of weeks or last few weeks seen a, um, a rising tension between mm. the two Koreas with, you know, with heightening of um, heightening the ante really mm. from North Korea. And then um, just last night, North Korea turned that down and um, got rid of the, uh, the loudspeakers mm. along the border and, and said that they will not be um, confronting South Korea militarily, that mm. is. Do you think that has anything to do with this uh, this anniversary? Probably not. I think uh, North Korea could have, uh, you know, escalated uh, with uh, even more grave provocations. But I think they decided to take a hit up post button in their recent actions because they're probably uh, assessing the responses given by South Korea and, and the United States and trying to figure out what would be the most optimal next step for them. So I think. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they behave in such a way, such as you know, threatening to uh, restart the psycholog psychological warfare along the DMC, then canceling the, the action at the last minute. But at the same time, I think North Korea is trying to send a message to South Korea that uh, nothing is irreversible in the inter-Korean relations. We have, we are, I think, a lot of experts and watchers of the inter-Korean affairs uh, was very, were uh, very shocked at the sight of a liaison office being blown up. Mm -hmm. uh, but and a lot, I think a lot of uh, experts and, uh, and, and observers have, have essentially assessed that such a step taken by North Korea was irreversible, that you know, inter-Korean relations were broken for good. But I think North Korea, by taking latest actions of de-escalation, is sending signal to South Korea that uh, it, the intercultural relations, even though it hit, uh, has hit the rock bottom in the recent years, uh, can recover from uh, this stage. I think that's a message of hope that uh, South Korean government, or at least the South Korean government, would like to interpret it that way. 
Well, on that note, I think we can switch over to uh, to where this event is taking place at uh, the Seoul Air Base, and uh, you will be seeing the official repatriation ceremony on this day commemorating the 70th anniversary of the outbreak of the Korean War, as well as uh, the repatriation of the 147 sets of the remains of the South Korean soldiers from Hawaii, which were excavated by the North Koreans in North Korea. Now we'll toss it over to the media facade that's team taking place in um, at Seoul Air Base. Now we will begin the return of the remains of seven identified army soldiers. On the other side, we have the remains of six American soldiers that have been excavated in South Korea waiting to return home. First, the president and the first lady will move to the podium. They will be followed by the members of the bereaved families of the fallen heroes, the Minister of Patriots and Veterans Affairs, the Minister of National Defense, American Ambassador to South Korea, Commander to the, of the UN Command, Heads of Patriotic Associations. And ladies and gentlemen, please rise from where you are to pay tribute to the fallen heroes. For those of you who find it uncomfortable to stand, please remain seated. So, Dr. Goh, I think this is really uh, the first time ever that uh, the Korean War uh, ceremony, anniversary ceremony, is being taking, uh, taking place in the evening like this. Mm -hmm. And um, the government's explanation was that they wanted more viewers uh, mm -hmm. to, to really watch this ceremony. And um, on the screen, you are seeing the remains mm -hmm. of the Korean War veterans. Mm -hmm. um, deplaning uh, the airplane from Hawaii and mm. these are the um, one part of the 147 mm. that were excavated in North Korea mm. and taken to Hawaii and analyzed jointly by the US and mm. South Korean forces and um, according to DNA analysis they were mm. matched up as South Koreans and being returned am I correct that's exactly right uh, so so I think uh, I mean out of the 147 remains, 77 actually came from uh, the remains that the North Korea returned to the United States uh, as part of the Singapore Summit Agreement two years ago. Uh, uh, those are called K-55 uh, uh, caskets, and, and the American authorities, uh, which called the Defense POW, Prisoner of War, and the Missing in Action Accounting Agency. Uh, Scott uh, went through a very in-depth DNA analysis of those remains and have identified that uh, out, of, uh, out of those fi uh, 55 remains, they found that uh, the remains of uh, 77 South Korean soldiers. And the rest, uh, the rest of the remains out of 147 actually come from earlier, uh, earlier uh, return of the remains by North Korea. Uh, those return of the remains took place uh, actually in, Many many years ago, uh, in the period uh, the period between 1990 and 1994, right. uh, that was the time when North Korea was uh, and the United States they are uh, trying to uh, increase the diplomatic contacts between the two countries. And you know, excuse me, North Korea uh, essentially used the return of the remains as a confidence building measure between the uh, longtime enemies, uh, North Korea and the United States. So therefore. Uh, this, I mean, this and, and the same agency that's uh, located in Hawaii investigated those early remains as well, and, and they used this occasion to put together uh, the remains of the South Korean soldiers and return them to their country. Right, and what you're seeing on your screen is a very moving ceremony of the repatriation of uh, the seven that have been identified, the seven uh, sets of the remaining of uh, the South Korean soldiers who were killed in the Korean War returning from Hawaii, as well as the six uh, UN soldiers 
who were excavated in South Korea. They will be uh, repatriated to the United States later on this evening, and they'll be meeting momentarily in the middle of this event place uh, in a moment or so. And that is the uh, Seoul Air Base. And uh, we heard from the U.S. Uh, military that they had sent off mm. these uh, the remains last mm. night, mm -hmm. and um, they were very courteously flown mm. by the airplane to South Korea. Um, and we've never really seen these kind of a procession before. Mm. And uh, every, all this is very new. And like you said, this is uh, President Moon's. Um, I suppose philosophy in, exactly. into Korean yeah. affairs. Yeah, and also it's a, I think it's the governor's philosophy of President Moon. I, you know, I definitely uh, would like to credit his philosophy in this regard. I think uh, President Moon uh, essentially tries to emphasize that individuals, people, are before policies or government or even countries. So I think uh, he definitely is applying his philosophy to this kind of uh, occasions. And this is actually a great example of uh, and essentially, in a way, the best uh, occasion for him to uh, emphasize this uh, for, so, for many, many years. Uh, the June 25th was uh, you know, an occasion to celebrate the state victory. They are the late Sergeant uh, Oh Dae-young, the late Private Kim Dong-sung, the late Private Kim Jong-yong, the late Private Park jin sil the late Private Chang jae su the late Private Choi jae the late Private Ha Jin-ho. They are the remains of these people who have been identified. The remains of six American soldiers that have made entrance together have been found at the operation sites where only American forces have been stationed, which are the battlefields of Daejeon, Changyeong area, Masan, Bunker Highland, and Sachangli. Following today's ceremony, they will finally be returning home. The remains of the Korean army and American soldiers who fought in the Korean War will be laid in state. Lay in state. Next reporting of the return. Attention. Salute. Reporting, Second Sergeant Yu Youngbong and 147 others have been ordered to return to homeland as of June 25th, 2020. Salute. Rest. On behalf of the fellow soldiers who returned in seven decades, Second Sergeant Yu Youngbong has a finished reporting of the return. He is also a war veteran who fought at the 7th Division, 17th Regiment, together with the 147 fellow soldiers who have been repatriated today. Please give them a big hand to the heroes of the Republic of Korea who have finally returned home in seven decades. Next, allegiance to the flag. Please face the flag in front of you. Allegiance to the flag. I pledge in front of the proud Tegeti flag allegiance to the Republic of Korea for the eternal glory of the country, liberty, and freedom of the Republic of Korea. Rest.
Next, we will sing the national anthem in unison, marking the 70th anniversary of the Korean War. The anthem will be sang specially with wind instrument and organ. In accordance with the Ministry of National Defense and National Chorus, we will sing until the fourth verse. Next, we will pay silent tribute to the fallen martyrs and heroes who sacrificed their lives for the nation. Silent tribute.
Haro. At ease. Next, floral tribute and incense burning for the Korean War veterans. Please join us as we pay tribute to the fallen heroes and the UN veterans and to remember their noble sacrifices. First, the President and the First Lady, as well as six representatives of the bereaved families, will pay their tribute. The President and the First Lady are paying their tributes. Next, there will be silent tribute. Salute to the 147 national heroes who have returned to homeland. Rest. Rest. Silent tribute. Rest. Next, there will be awarding of war veteran badges. Mr. President, together with the Minister of Patriots and Veteran Affairs, Minister of National Defense, U.S. Ambassador to South Korea, Commander-in-Chief of UN Command, and representatives of eight associations related to the Korean War will move to the podium. The First Lady and family members will remain in their seats. Dr. Go, um, what we're seeing in the screen right now, um, 147 caskets mm -hmm. lying there. Um, you know, with the music and, and with, um, with the kind of, um, I guess, solemnness mm -hmm. there, it, it's, it's quite moving. And not only does it send out a message to North Korea, but I think this also shows the kind of alliance between South Korea and the United States, as well as uh, with the uh, 22 UN sending states mm. to the Korean War, does it not? Definitely. I mean, in, uh, for even like a recovery of the uh, remains of the South Korean soldiers wouldn't have been possible without the uh, United States. I mean, United States has been in, uh, essentially involved in this, uh, uh, this initiative from the get-go and they've been sending joint recovery op uh, operation personnel into North Korea uh, for ten, more than 10 years. And they identified the remains of South Korean soldiers and, and then uh, worked with South Korean government to recover uh, the remains and also, also identify and finally repatriate those remains. Uh, and right. also, and there, uh, also there's an additional fact that uh, South Korea also has a special unit that's dedicated to recovering remains of the unidentified the missing soldiers, not just for the uh, South Korean army, but also just for the American and other uh, uh, you know, United Nations uh, countries that are involved in the Korean War. So in that sense, I think uh, we are continuing this cooperation and much of the know-how that uh, South Korea has uh, got passed from the, uh, by the United States. Right, uh, the South Korean flag alongside the UN flag and with President Moon mm. alongside the U.S. Ambassador to South Korea, Harry Harris, who is also a Marine himself mm. for, the U for the U.S., of course.
모두 자리에 앉아 주시기 바랍니다. Please be seated. 아픈 그거 아닙니까? 뭐 모든 걸다 뺏어간 날이라고 봐야 되겠죠. 뭐 나에, 나에 대한 미래를 다 뺏어갔다고 보면 안 되겠죠. The future ahead of me was deprived. Well, I went to the ministry, ministry of Association and I was told that my father passed away. There was a certificate of his death. I called out to my brother. Of course, I couldn't reach him. And I remember the ornament in my mom's hair. It is engraved in our memories, and the heroes live forever in our memories. To bring back our names and to find our families. Crossing the 70 years of time. After flying 7,000 kilometers, even after seven decades, we have not once forgotten about you, the sacrifices that you made for our nation. We will safely escort you back home. And the 147 remains that came back to homeland, the heroes they are. The names that were forgotten, the names of our heroes, we will bring them back again now. So I got a phone call from the defense ministry that they found the remains of my father. I was so happy and delighted I couldn't believe my ears. In the name of the Republic of Korea, we will remember you. Good evening, I am actor Yoo Seung Ho. When I was invited to this ceremony a while ago, I was told the news that today, the 147 fallen heroes finally return home, crossing the sea of 70 years. So today, I would like to send a short letter to one of the soldiers who might have been my age when he deceased. To my friend. If I may, I would like to address you as my friend. You remain in your 20s ever since your short life came to an end in the 1950s. And so I would like to depict that very day of yours calling you a friend. My friend, how frightened were you as you left home for your sudden call-up? You would have choked with tears, letting go of your mother's hands, who hurriedly made warm rice before you leave. Nevertheless, my friend, wearing an outworn uniform, with a rifle in your hand, you headed to the front line. And you fought so bravely, like no other, on the hellish battlefield. Under the scorching heat that feels like carrying the sun, in the fierce winter wind that freezes drinking water, 
You advanced endlessly, passing by the deaths of your comrades in action. My friend, how did you endure those dreadful days? How were you able to overcome the fear that haunted you every night? How did you ingest the agony and sadness that shells you every now and then? And at the very last moment, I wonder who you thought of before closing your eyes. My friend, the shabby house you found shelter against bullets have now become a school full of children. The exhausting route of March, where you would have took out pictures of your families, have now become a cycle path for the young. Your hometown where you never return have now become a populous city. My dear friend, on the soil you have defended, another peaceful day passes by. On the soil you have defended with life, we live another abundant day. My friend, we will never forget. Just as your mother never forgot you, we too will remember you forever. 25th of June, 2020, from a friend of a hero. Like this, we have lived a day of abundance. The heroes who have sacrificed their lives for the nation will indeed never be forgotten. Thank you, actor Yoo Seung Ho, for your genuine recital of the letter. Next here is a second video from the leaders of UN member states who fought during the war, a message of friendship and peace. President Moon, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be with you. I'm speaking from the Rose Garden. Right next to me is the Oval Office, the White House. Special place. And you are also at a special place, and a special place in life. The 70th anniversary of the Korean War. I just want to say for all of those brave men and women that fought to keep communism out, thank you. We salute you. You're very special people. I wish I could be with you today, but unfortunately, we'll have to make it another time where I can shake your hand directly to all of the people that helped so much from the United Nations, everybody involved. It was an incredible thing we all together did. And I want to congratulate you on victory. Thank you very much and have a good day. A message from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II to the President and the people of the Republic of Korea and all the veterans who served in the Korean War. Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh send their good wishes to the people of the Republic of Korea and all veterans on the 70th anniversary of the start of the Korean War. Her Majesty joins you in remembering all those who paid the ultimate sacrifice in the defense of your nation. 70 years ago, swarms of 
fireflies and sea fires soared from the deck of HMS Triumph in the first British action of the Korean War. By the time the armistice came, 80,000 British soldiers, sailors and airmen had fought to defend your country from the communist menace and more than a thousand never returned home. But when I look at your country today, I know their sacrifice was not in vain. Through your peaceful success, honour their memory. We stand with you now, just as we did 70 years ago. Today marks the 70th anniversary of the start of the Korean War. Almost 27,000 Canadians stepped up far from home. 516 never made it back. Their courage and their sacrifice have helped to make the Korea of the South a country prosperous and peaceful. We were able to help the Republic of Korea to achieve peace. We pay deep respect. To the Republic of Korea, we want to state that we have fought together to safeguard peace and security. And we have made great friendship relationship going forward. And fighting the Korean War, we have uh, built great solidarity and friendship. And we believe that it is a very uh, of our great honor and pleasance to have such an opportunity to do so. And going forward, uh, we believe that our strategic partnership relationship that has been achieved in 2012 will also achieve and develop further. And marking this historic moment of the 70th anniversary of the outbreak of the Korean War, we pay deep respect and appreciation to all of those who have been sacrificed. For the people who lie in the injustice uh, safeguarding the peace in Korean Peninsula, we pay deep respect to uh, the to the um, mem uh, memories of the heroes, and God bless them all. Next, marking the 70th anniversary of the Korean War, the president will award government medals for persons of national merits who safeguarded the Republic of Korea by fighting during the Korean War 70 years ago. And we also will uh, award peace medals to the uh, ambassadors for uh, the countries that fought together. First, we have three recipients of the Order of Military Merit. Order Certificates, Army 9th Infantry Division, Corporal Tung Ho Young. The above person has fought during the Korean War with distinguished military services, and thus the following order is awarded in accordance to the Constitution of the Republic of Korea. Harang Order of Military Merit, June 25, 2020, the President. It is awarded to his son, Kong Young Shin. Order of uh, Military Merit, the late Kim Young Shun. The details is the same as above. The President, on June 25, 2020, it is awarded to Spouse Yu Tae Sung. Order of a Military Merit, the late Bo Bung Pek. The details are the same as above. On June 25th, 2020, the President, it is being awarded to his son, O Tong Lo.
Next, remembering uh, the sacrifice of the fallen heroes, we will be awarding uh, the appreciation medals. And here, uh, as a representative, we have the vice chair of the Association for the War Veterans. Next, we have the Certificate of Peace, and on behalf of the UN Member States, we have the Chair of the uh, Dutch Ambassador to South Korea. This pledge is, has been made as a symbol of peace and reconciliation. Thank you very much. The courage and devotion of the war veterans for the sake of freedom and peace of this country will be engraved in the heart of the Republic of Korean people deeply. Please greet the public. Please return to your respective seats. Next, the President of the Republic of Korea will deliver his commemorative address. Fellow Korean citizens, war veterans, and the members of the bereaved families, Today, we are here to mark the 70th anniversary of the outbreak of the Korean War. And the Seoul Air Base has become a very solemn place as we welcome the final repatriation of the remains of 147 sets of fallen heroes. They have finally restored their military badges of the Republic of Korea and have finally returned home in 70 years. This is indeed a sad but proud moment. Although too much time has passed, the homeland has never forgotten you. It is a great privilege for myself to be able to pay our full respect. Among the heroes that we have laid today, there are seven soldiers who's, who have been identified. All of them have been sacrificed at the South Hamgyong province battlefield of Changjin Lake. The lake private Kim dong Sang, the late private Kim jong yong the late uh, private Park jin sil the late private Chong jae sul the late private Choi jae ik the late private Ha Jin-ho, the late uh, Sergeant Oh dae young all of their names will be engraved in our history. Please rest in peace in the comfort of your family. The sacrifice of every uh, war veteran has become the foundation of our liberty, peace, and prosperity. I extend my sincere respect and words of comfort to the members of the bereaved families who have endured the long time of longing and sorrow with a sense of pride. I also extend my sincere respect for the surviving war veterans who have been waiting for the return of their fellow comrades. Together with the members of the public, my administration will remember the fallen heroes eternally. There are still some 123,000 fallen heroes that have yet not yet returned. Home. Until the very day that they return to their family members, we will exert our full efforts to exca excavate their remains. My administration has awarded belated government medals to some 5,000 war veterans. We have also significantly enhanced the living allowance as well as distinguished military services allowance, war veteran allowance, and child allowance for the fallen heroes. We will continue to make efforts to respect the war veterans and their family members going forward. Today at the podium to respect the souls of the war dead, we have the remains of six American soldiers that we have excavated and will send back to the U.S. Our public will never forget the sacrifice of 22 U.N. member states, including the United States, who fought together in the Korean War. The Washington Memorial Hall a wall will be com completed by 2022 in order to eternally remember the fact that such a great alliance has made its roots on the noble sacrifice of the many war veterans. The UN war veterans whom I met on my overseas state visits consider Korea as their second home. 
and had great pleasure and pride in our own development. On behalf of the members of our public, I have a word sent, words of appreciation to the war veterans from the United States, France, New Zealand, Norway, and Sweden. And I've also awarded Thai war veterans with medals for peace disciple. The act of paying respect to the veterans has no borders. Through various projects jointly carried out with UN uh, combatant nations, we will continue to remember the respect uh, and uh, the noble sacrifices of the fallen heroes. Marking the 70th anniversary of the, of the Korean War, the leaders of the UN nations have sent us meaningful video messages. I thank them all for participating in today's ceremony. Fellow Korean citizens, the Korean War is a war that has made today's us possible. The tragedy resulted from the war and the commitment to overcome it, as well as the pride of economic growth that has been achieved on the ashes of the war and the ideological wounds that have left behind are all engraved in our hearts and lives. While seven decades have passed, they still have become parts of us. Overcoming the ravages of the war, we became true citizens of the Republic of Korea. We united in front of national crises and developed our energy to safeguard the value of liberal democracy. It is also the Korean War that has made the most ordinary persons to the greatest patriots. In the middle of farming, studying, our neighbors have left their family members behind in order to safeguard the front lines of the Nakdong River becoming heroes who reclaimed the city of Seoul. As they felt the value of existence of the country, they experienced elevated patriotism and became to acknowledge the value of peace. The Korean War also became the source of confidence for us to overcome any types of challenges. The pride of overcoming the war and the technology that they, that they have owned in the military, the war veterans have become the backbone of the country's reconstruction after the war. War. On behalf of the comrades who died on the battlefield, they expressed their love for the Republic of Korea, becoming the pride of their neighbors and family. However, we cannot fully commemorate the Korean War. This is because the war has not yet come to an end. Even at this very moment, we continue to witness threats of war. We are also fighting against visible threats, but also invisible hostilities within ourselves. We are all the daughters of the war veterans and sons of war refugees. The war has left wounds all over the country and is still deeply engraved in individual lives as well as the history of families. This has become uh, um, has been expressed as public sovereignty and democracy, as a true spirit of anti-communism and a sense of diligence to be well of together. However, all of us share the same view that never on this Korean peninsula shall we repeat another war. Those who have sacrificed their everything can respect and hold hands with the people living through the same era. In order to make the Korean War into a history uh, to experience and that unites all of our generations and ideologies, the continuing war shall now come to an end. Never forgetting the tr strategies of the war is the first step towards the end of the war. It is also the longing of all global citizens who love peace, as well as many UN war veterans who sacrificed their lives for peace and liberty on this, uh, on this land 70 years ago. On June 25, 1950, the UN Security Council has adopted a resolution within 10 hours of the outbreak of the war, urging the North's military to halt invasion and withdraw above the 38th parallel line. For the first time in history, it has also exerted UN collective security 
for the recovery of peace and safety on the Korean Peninsula. The world had to pay a price of noble sacrifice. What we need now is to remember the many sacrifices that have become the root of today's liberty, peace and prosperity, as well as pride in ourselves. Just as the spirits of the independent martyrs led to the spirit of the fallen hero safeguarding their homeland, which has also led to a grand spirit of securing, securing democracy, we need to revive the sense of patriotism and liberal democracy engraved in our hearts. And this is the way for us to truly remember the war. Fellow Koreans, during the Korean War, 138,000 soldiers of the Korean army died. 450,000 have been wounded, while 25,000 others have been missing. Nearly 1 million civilians have been wounded and died in massacre. 100,000 children became orphans, 3.2 million people left their hometowns, and thousands and millions of our citizens had to go through the pain of being separated. There was no, not a single person who were free from the war. Democracy retreated, and we also faced immense economic damages. 80% of our industrial facilities have been destroyed, and some assets of two years' worth of national income have become rubble. The socio-economic foundations and the base of the lives of our citizens also collapse. Even after the war, the two Koreas had to consume their national energy, confronting in the front lines of the Korean a Cold War for a very long period of time. As our people experience the pains of war, there were also some nations that have enjoyed the benefits of the war. However, reconstruction of the post-war economy was as a tumultuous journey as breaking away from the colonial rule. Initially, we relied on international aid for recovery and reconstruction. We focused on the light industry first, moving on to the heavy chemical industry and the ICT industry. It took 70 years to catch up with the developed countries. The generation that overcame the Korean War achieved the miracle on the Han River. In 1953, when the war was over, the Republic of Korea's per capita income was merely $67. Rising from the ravages of war, we now join the ranks of the world's top 10 economies with a national income of over $30,000. From an aid recipient country, we're now a donor country. We're transforming into a pace-setting economy from a follower economy. The world is paying attention to the Republic of Korea in the process of battling with COVID-19. Now the Republic of Korea that our people have defended is strong enough to protect the people. It has the power and spirit to create peace. The ROK military has the power to defend against any threats. We maintain a thorough military preparedness. We will not once allow a single piece of our territory, territorial waters, or airspace to be plundered. We want peace. However, if anyone threatens the safety and lives of our people, we will counteract resolutely. We have a strong national defense power that will not tolerate any provocations in all directions. Based on the solid ROK-US alliance, we are also seamlessly preparing for the transfer of the wartime operational control. Based on our own strengths, we will indeed safeguard peace and make peace. Honorable fellow Koreans, war veterans and their relatives, we oppose war. ROK's GDP is more than 50 times that of North Korea. Trade volume is over 400 times of North Korea's. The regime competition between the two Koreas ended long time ago. There is no intention to force Pyongyang with our system.
We are seeking peace and want to live well together. We will relentlessly look for paths of coexistence through peace. Before we talk about reunification, I wish we could become good neighbors first. We established an elementary and secondary evacuation schools in the face of the ravages of war, and wartime alliance universities operated in various regions. We prepared for the future, developed the power to safeguard peace, creating a country that no one could now our sons and daughters are preparing for the post-corona era ahead of others and becoming the Koreans leading the world. Both for our parents' generations who experienced war and our posterity that will lead the next 70 years, peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula is the obligation that we must achieve. It is a long-cherished wish of all 80 million people. I hope that North Korea will take its bold steps in joining hands in our efforts to end the saddest war in the world history. I hope that the tragedy of war that the two Koreas had to go through be passed on to our future generations as a shared memory that could become a driving force to open up an era of peace. Achieving peace is a prerequisite to the discussions of reunification, and only after a long period of peace may we see the door to reunification. When reconciliation and peace between South and North Korea is conveyed as a sense of hope to the world, I believe that is and that will be when we truly repay our fallen patriots' noble sacrifices. Thank you. The president is being back to his seat. Thank you very much for your words. For all of the people around the world uh, who love peace, I hope our hopes will be achieved. Next, let us watch the last part of the message of friendship and peace from the heads of states. Once again, we would like to thank all the leaders who sent the video messages. Just like 70 years ago, the friendship and peace of our 23 countries still continues and will last perpetually. I'm pleased to join you in honouring those who defended the Republic of Korea during the Korean War. More than 17,000 Australians served in Korea. 340 did not come home. On this milestone anniversary, I want to affirm Australia's commitment to stand by our Korean friends in support of peace and stability. We are like-minded liberal democracies who believe in the rights of every person to live free of coercion. We believe in enterprise and free trade and we have both witnessed the transformative power that occurs in nations when liberty and prosperity coexist. Australia and the Republic of Korea are firm friends and partners, a relationship underpinned by shared values. Our partnership has seen us work closely together on common challenges, protecting our peoples. So on this anniversary, I honour the bond between us, and in particular, I acknowledge President Moon, with whom I've had the opportunity to meet on many occasions. But I also, most importantly, honour almost 100,000 Australians with Korean ancestry. And we remember the sacrifices made by our veterans in the defence of a great friend. In 2016, since 2016, and in 2018, I was able to visit the UN cemetery in Busan and in Incheon. It was an unforgettable time that I had there, and I would like to pay my deepest respect and tribute to all the Dutch soldiers who came back five years ago. We stand here to, in remembrance of them and their sacrifice towards freedom and liberty. I wish we can develop and advance our friendship. Seven decades ago, 
more than 7,000 young Filipino soldiers joined allies in the Korean War. From the great battle of Yuldong to the battle of Iri Hill, Filipinos never faltered in defending freedom and the democratic way of life. Today, we all know the Filipinos and soldiers of all nations who fought valiantly in that war. There is no other way. We must recognize bravery is not easy to master. We must remember heroism very seldom seen. And we must reaffirm values so sacred they form the bedrock of our special bilateral ties. As the world faces emerging challenges yet, let the memory of those who fell in the Korean War inspire us all to rise together jointly in solidarity. Thank you. Heads of state, all the distinguished guests, and the war veterans, the Thailand participated in the uh, Korean War together with the UN forces, and we were the first country to dispatch the military to the Korean War. And all the war veterans, the Korean War veterans, are the proud soldiers of our country who did their utmost and devoted themselves for the sake of freedom and peace. And their devotion has become the base and the backbone of the friendship between our two countries. The war veterans safeguarded peace on the Korean Peninsula, and they will be an inspiration, a perpetual inspiration for the prosperity of our country and the region. Next, we will sing the war songs in unison. The songs we sing today are a dedication to the fallen heroes who have sacrificed themselves for the country. The songs of today is all the more meaningful as we have with us the Korean War veterans who will sing together while thinking about their fellow soldiers killed in action. The Korean War veterans, the Chiefs of Staff of All Armed Forces, the Marine Corps Deputy Commander-in-Chief, the Ministry of National Defense and the National Chorus, and the KBS Symphony Orchestra will perform the war songs for each forces. Please sing as you, uh, you hear your military anthems and please rise to join in the singing. First up is the strong army, the elite army that stands by the people. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the ROK army. All right, um, so uh, we just heard from President Moon Jae-in. Now, this was a long-awaited speech by many. Many were um, looking to see if President Moon Jae-in would be addressing North Korea in any shape or form during this speech. Mm. To uh, sum it up a little bit, um, he expressed gratitude for the foreign war veterans. Mm. He said that the country, South Korea, will remember and honor their noble sacrifices. He also instilled pride in uh, South Korea rise from the rebels of the Korean War and building a nation that it is today. And he also uh, mentioned the miracle of the Han River and the economy that it is today. Um, he also said the, the end of war begins with never forgetting the brutality of the Korean War. He showed resolution for a strong military that while we want peace, will uh, counter resolutely mm. if faced with any threat against our people or the nation. What's interesting is um, his mentioning regarding vis-a-vis -vis North Korea. He said that 
um, we don't seek regime change or any of that sort mm. against North Korea. Rather, he, um, we pursue peace and that we would like to coexist and live in peace like neighbors with North Korea, um, which I will be asking you how to interpret this. Later on, um, he said that we, uh, the 80 million people of Korea, that's mm. South Korea and North Korea together, the mm -hmm. population exactly. of the two Koreas, it's the long cherished uh, wish of ours, 80 million people, mm. to, um, to bring peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula. And that is how he uh, basically summed up his package, mm. I mean, his speech. Now, what is your impression of his speech overall? And um, did it did he live up to your um, expectations vis-a-vis -vis North Korea? So I think he, I mean, we already discussed about how um, I mean, different uh, this event is compared to previous uh, commemoration of the, this uh, particular tragic anniversary. And this time the government, I mean, the moon and oppressive moon is emphasizing uh, the individual sacrifices and then he's putting a name and face to all the soldiers and civilians who actually you know, pay the ultimate price to defend the South Korea, Republic of Korea. And I think uh, that's, uh, that, I mean, I think he's emphasizing the sacrifice and extends the definition to, to other nations that came to uh, the help assist the South Korea to defend itself. But what's also notable about his speech is that one key subject is missing, and that's actually North Korea. None of these, I mean, his speech essentially tries to avoid mentioning North Korea in any negative manner, negative light. Mm -hmm. And as you, uh, you know, mentioned, I mean, North Korea only appears in a speech as a, as a, as a, as a, as a counterpart in reconciliation. Mm -hmm. There's no such a mentioning of overcoming or like a confronting North Korea. No member, I mean, no. He, if um, President Moon does his utmost to avoid mentioning North Korea as a former enemy nation. So essentially North Korea becomes recast as a, as a counterparty to reconciliation and, and actually representing a definite break from the past. I think the key word here is essentially for President Moon to emphasize not just to the domestic audience but also to North Korea that this government, that this, his particular administration represents a total break from the past, the way it treats the very important moment in South Korean history which has defined the nation. Uh, I think he makes a essentially list of all the achievements that South Korea has uh, achieved in, uh, after the Korean War ended. And I think it's very interesting that uh, he's trying to emphasize that the war is over, the past is past, that we have to move on. And I think, and then at the same time, uh, he's also trying to humanize the conflict. And thereby, I think he's hoping to humanize North Korea. Now, um, what's also noteworthy is um, the fact that he actually asked North Korea, or he said he hoped North Korea to make um, a bold move in trying to end the the saddest war in modern history. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I mean the. What is he asking North Korea to do? Essentially, change its approach. I mean, we have seen the last couple of weeks that North Korea hasn't really fundamentally changed from its previous um, behavior. I mean, even though we have a very, you can say, quote unquote, a friend, a government that's friendly to North Korea, very different from some other governments, actually the government that immediately preceded uh, this Moon administration, the pres administration of President Bakune, happened to be very antagonistic towards North Korea. So he's actually reminding North Korea that South Korea has changed. We have a, there's a government that's actually very positive and receptive of North Korean uh, needs and uh, requests, and therefore North Korea should actually reciprocate. It's a reminder to North Korea that in order for North Korea, actually not just for the Korean nation to succeed and survive, it's really necessary for North Korea to change for its own good. Now, as you can see on the screen, we're seeing a lot of um, boosting of morale for mm. the uh, for the army, the navy, and the mm. air force. And uh, President Moon Jae-in, in his speech, uh, made uh, um, strong mention about how strong the South Korean military is. In fact, he said that never again will we allow. Um, even a hand span of our territory, our territorial waters, our airspace to be mm. violated again. And he, he emphasized how strong the South Korean military is and we're always ready to mm. counter with the utmost, uh, I guess, most fiercely against any kind of a threat. Why is he uh, upping the, uh, the military morale here? Well, clearly he wants to send a message to not just to North Korea, but then all the neighboring countries that uh, South Korea essentially is trying to appeal for peace from the position of strength rather than position of weakness. 
that uh, you know, North South Korea is not uh, trying to start dialogue with North Korea because it's weak, it's weak but actually it's totally the opposite because it's, it's strong. So uh, essentially, uh, it, uh, President Moon is uh, letting North Korea know that there's a window of opportunity for North Korea to take advantage of this very conciliatory position that South Korea is assuming right now. And it's, uh, I mean, essentially saying that, that if, the, I mean, if this window of opportunity closes, then there's no much of a gain for North Korea anymore. There will only be pain for them. Um, he also made mention of the OPCON transfer, that mm. we're very much on schedule and mm. that we're preparing for it. What are you reading into that? Well, that's a little bit of a concern, I would say. I think it's trying to uh, be, I mean, to make this uh, event too much of a radical break from the past. Uh, even though he's emphasizing the need for a strong U.S. ROK alliance, he's also appealing for the faster OPCON transfer because I think, uh, I mean, some people I think might see that as a representation of the past. Next, we will deliver the remains of U.S. soldiers to the UNC. Please rise from your seats. A total of six remains of the U.S. soldiers will be sent off today. The six fallen heroes depart from Ulsan on the 26th of June to return home. Proceed. Next, we will carry the remains of 147 South Korean soldiers to the send-off vehicle. The President and the First Lady, as well as the distinguished guests, will move to the front of the vehicle. Other guests are encouraged to remain seated while extending due courtesy. On the screen, you're seeing President Moon Jae-in uh, seeing off the 147 
sets of uh, remains of the South Korean soldiers from the Korean War who were excavated by the North Koreans in the early 90s and um, after 2018 who were handed over to the U.S. and in Hawaii were analyzed by the South Korean and U.S. forces together and identified to be South Korean soldiers. They were flown this morning to South Korea and um, they were repatriated to South Korea. Now they'll be sent off um, to be buried at the National Cemetery. Um, we are seeing Salute to the Heroes. It's a commemoration of the 70th anniversary of the Korean War uh, this year. Um, the caskets are being moved to the send-off vehicle where President Moon Jae-in and the First Lady will be seeing them off um, as they move to the vehicle. Now, in attendance at the ceremony tonight are some 300 veterans, bereaved families and government officials. Uh, they welcomed the remains of the 147 South Korean soldiers killed during the war. They were repatriated from Hawaii. At this follows the excavation work in North Korea by the North Koreans in the early 90s and following the 2018 first ever North Korea U.S. summit in Singapore. Uh, the deceased war veterans, including seven who have been identified, they were awarded medals posthumously earlier on by President Moon Jae-in. You're seeing um, President Moon and the bereaved families and government officials and war veterans standing in the rain there at the Seoul Air Base. Um, this is the first ever uh, ceremony of such kind being held in such a manner in the evening and uh, the government says that's considering the viewership as well as the elderly war veterans who will be in attendance and because of the heat wave these days in Korea. Now, in addition, six sets of remains of American soldiers that were recovered by the South Korean military uh, were repatriated to the U.S. They were handed over to the U.S. military uh, just moments ago and um, they will be flown to from Osan back home on the 26th of June, which is tomorrow, here in South Korea. And for those of you just joining us, you're watching Adidas live coverage of the 70th anniversary of the Korean War. Salute to the heroes, uh, coupled with the repatriation uh, ceremony of the 147 
sets of the remains of the South Korean soldiers excavated in North Korea and repatriated from the U.S. to South Korea, as well as six American soldiers who were excavated in South Korea and repatriated to the U.S. who will be sent off tomorrow from Osan base. Uh, this is a very solemn ceremony being held at Seoul Air Base. We're about an hour and uh, 20 minutes into the ceremony being held outdoors. President Moon Jae-in is hosting the ceremony and as you can see there is light rain uh, outdoors and you're seeing about 300 people standing there in the ceremony. And that brings us to the end of our live coverage of the 70th anniversary of the Korean War. Salute to the heroes. I'd like to thank our Dr. Ko Myung-hyun, as always, for your insights and expertise. Uh, do you have any thoughts, final thoughts? No, I think it's, um, it's been uh, very uh, you know, impressive. And I think it's trying to change the perception of Korean War, as we understand. Uh, in that sense, I credit to President Moon for his very innovative approach. All right. Well, many thanks, as always, for being here with us and for your insights. My pleasure. And uh, thank you to all of you for staying all throughout our coverage, special coverage that is. Tonight, we remember our fallen heroes, the ones who have sacrificed their lives for this great nation, the millions from 22 UN sending states who came to fight for this country, and the 122,609 yet to be found 70 years later. You will not be forgotten. Thank you for watching. Good night.